So we first derive the uh, velocity field inside of the lubrication layer. And so we start with our governing equations that we derive for the lubrication. So first the Y momentum equation, which is just the pressure gradient in the Y direction, which is across the streamlines, is equal to zero. Uh, we do not take into account here effect of gravity because uh, the film is going to be really s small and gravity is not going to play an important role. And the X momentum equation. So one thing to notice is uh, because the partial P of a partial Y is equal to zero, that tells you that the pressure is actually not going to be a function of Y, and you're only going to have a pressure gradients in the X direction. So P is only a function of X, and the pressure here, uh, the partial of the pressure, we can write as a straight derivative. Note that we don't know what the velocity is, and we don't know what the pressure is, but what we are mostly interested in is the pressure. And uh, the pressure distribution is what is, what you, what is going to show, is, show us why uh, those lubrication layers are able to generate uh, large pressures. So if we rewrite uh, the equation, because we want to extract the velocity field, we're going to write that the second partial of u with respect to y is equal to 1 divided by mu dp dx. And now it's important to see here that you have a partial with respect to y, and here this term does not depend on y. Right. This term is a constant with respect to y because the pressure is only a function of x, which means that this is one of the rare cases where you can actually integrate directly with respect to uh, the independent variable y, because again, this term here does not depend on y. So we integrate once. This is, by the way, the same derivation. You will recognize that what we did when we computed for the quet or for the Poiseuille flow, and you'll see that in the end we'll get a combination of both. So we integrate once with y, and so we get that this term here, which is a constant with respect to y, becomes the constant times y, plus another constant, which again would be a function of x. If we integrate a second time, that we get uh, here our parabolic term, 1 divided by 2 nu dp dx y squared, plus a constant, which is again a function of x times y, plus another function of y, uh, which is again a constant, sorry, plus another constant, which is only a function of x, okay? Uh, and so this tells us how the velocity depends on y, right? But we still don't know how the velocity changes with x, because we still don't know what this dp dx is. How do we identify this constant? These constants are identified using uh, the boundary conditions, so the constants are identified with the boundary conditions. Our boundary conditions, remember, are uh, zero velocity at y equals h, so at the top, and minus u uh, at y equals zero. And so when you finally write all the terms, you get one first term, which looks like a Poiseuille flow. Right? So note that this term here is going to be zero both at, uh, um, at h equals zero and at h, so this term is uh, a Poiseuille flow, plus another part, once we've identified the constant, we'll get another part here, which looks like a Couet flow, and note that this Couet flow here is indeed when y is equal to h, so at the top plate is also equal to zero, so this whole thing is equal to zero at y equals to h, and at y equals to zero, uh, this here will be equal to minus h divided by h, so minus one, and the velocity will be minus u, this will be equal to zero. So indeed, this here is our velocity distribution. Um, note that here, almost everything is known. We know u, we know h, but what we don't know is the pressure distribution. Eh? So we know at every single x, we know how uh, the, the velocity profile is going to look across the streamlines, and it will look like the superposition of a Poiseuille flow and a Couet flow. Um, but we don't know how the velocity profile varies with the uh, independent variable x, and that's what we are uh, after.